it's hard to find a more iconic parka than the entry beat, aka a snorkel parka because well, it looks like a snorkel. Even harder to find is a vintage entry B in a size XS. But by some stroke of luck, I found one on Instagram selling for 30 bucks by some random dealer from Thailand. So I bought it, received it, opened it, admired it, packed it in, and here we are in Japan on the Tatayama Kurobe Alpine route. Okay, let's check this jacket out. A big part of the jacket's appeal is that, worn with the right layering system, it will keep you warm down to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's currently minus 3 degrees, so probably an overkill. But to the US Air Force flight crews stationed in extremely cold areas like the arctic this jacket was a godsend i don't know probably i've never been to the arctic like most military jackets the entry b has undergone multiple changes throughout the decades and luckily for collectors it's super easy to date them my jacket here is a ripe old age of 40 years old you can tell because the contract number starts with dla which stands for defense logistics agency on dla contracts the two numbers after dla 100 indicate the year of manufacture in my case, it's 83. So, manufactured in 1983 by Greenbrier. One thing you can't help but notice when you put it on is just how heavy it is, mostly due to the polyester filling and wood lining. I'm guessing it's at least 2kg, and apparently the earlier wool versions were heavier, but as someone who rarely wears winter jackets, this still feels weighty. Of course, you can always get lighter, modern parkas made from down. The trade off is that, compared to polyester, down is less breathable and loses its insulating properties when wet. Then again, down jackets now this have a water repellent finish so don't sweat it. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk fabric. The outer shell is made from an 80% cotton, 20% nylon blend in a typical Air Force sage green. But it wasn't always like that. The entry B's predecessor, the entry A, came in an Air Force blue and along with early 50s versions of the entry B were made of nylon. Now, nylon is prone to discoloration when exposed to UV rays. So servicemen whose parkas were frequently exposed to such conditions gradually turned purple. The parka, not the person. And much like fates on raw denim, this discoloration was a status symbol, a way of showing how long the wearer had served. Unfortunately, Uncle Sam always finds a way to cheapen out. The fur trim was initially made from wolf, beaver, or coyote fur, and the hood was also Mouton 9. But by the early 70s, all these were phased out and replaced by synthetics. The hood lining on my parka feels okay, but the trim feels stiff and dry, kinda like the before hair pictures in shampoo ads. Also makes you look like a shaggy version of this. Okay, I've got a trim to catch, let's quickly go over the hardware. The jacket features draw cords to cinch the waist and the hood, a buckle that doesn't even feel like it makes the hood smaller, four flannel hand warmer pockets. Looks like the flannel you'd find in OG 108 shirts. A storm flap, shank buttons, snap buttons which are no longer snappy because it's vintage, knitted cuffs, a cigarette pocket to stash some cash, and a zipper, Scoville branded, nicely patinated but strangely on the right side which is more of a detail found in women's jackets. In terms of fit, this is how size XS fits on me. Definitely not as slim as the slim fit Alpha Industries entry B, but neither is it overly baggy. I'm wearing it on top of three layers, including a thermal base layer, and I say there's still room for more. Yes, the jacket is hefty, but you'll be able to move about just fine. Basically, anywhere with sub-zero temperatures, this parka will be like a soft, puffy sack of armor. Any place warmer and you want to take it off. So no regret selling it for 30 bucks to a random vintage shop when I was back in Tokyo, at least that's what I tell myself. So yeah, that's all for now. I'm off to get some sushi, but you can watch this video in the meantime. Until next time, stay subtle.